my little Margie. I've been both mother and father to her since she was born. She's grown up now, and you think my job's all done, eh? <laughs> well, that's what you think. When she was little, I could spank her and make her mind me. I had control over her. I made her eat her spinach, no candy before meals. And when she disobeyed, I took her roller skates away for a week. Well, what can you do when a girl reaches this age? She's completely out of hand. I've got a problem, believe me. I've got a problem. That's my father. I've raised him from childhood. That is, my childhood. He's nearly 50 now, and you'd think he'd settle down, wouldn't you? Well, that's what you think. Today, he looks better in shorts on a tennis court than fellas 25. Girls wink at him, and what's worse, he winks back at them. I want a nice, old, comfortable father. I try to look after him, but he just won't settle down. I've got a problem, believe me, I've got a problem. I congratulate you, Mr. Albright. Uh, this analysis of yours uh, coincides almost exactly with my views of current market trends. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Lundstrom. You appoint us your American representatives, and I'll have Mr. Albright personally supervise your account. What do you say? Is it a deal? <laughs> well, now, please don't rush me, gentlemen. In any deal of this magnitude, I am primarily concerned with the dignity and the character of the men I select to represent me. However, I will say that I have heard nothing but good things about your firm. I shall make my decision within the week. Yes? Call for Mr. Lundstrom. It's for you, Mr. Lundstrom. Oh, thank you. Hello. A girl did what? No, Eric, don't call the police. That would only cause a lot of undignified publicity. I will be there directly. Goodbye. My secretary at the hotel. This is most extraordinary. Well, oh, what happened? A mysterious young woman tried to bribe our maid at the hotel. Wanted to gain entrance to my suite. What do you make of that? I... Uh, I haven't the slightest idea, Mr. Lundstrom. Well, uh, good day, gentlemen. I beg your pardon. Not at all. Uh, good day, Mr. Albright. Goodbye, Mr. Lundstrom. Hello, Vern. Hi, dear. That girl at the hotel. Albright, you've got to do something about that daughter of yours. Uh-oh. What's Margie done now? We have reason to believe she's been trying to see Mr. Lundstrom. Oh, I see. That Bermuda trip you promised her. And she thinks that if she can get to see Mr. Lundstrom, she can figure out a way of speeding things up. <laughs> That's all Margie. You heard what Lundstrom said about dignity and things like that. All right, you've got to keep her away from him. Well, Margie's only trying to help. Just a second. Suppose we have her meet a Mr. Lundstrom. A Mr. Lundstrom? That's right. Some actor who can speak Swedish. A decoy to keep Margie occupied until we get the real Mr. Lundstrom signed, sealed, and safely back to Sweden. Boy, you're a genius. Hi, Margie. Dad, I didn't hear you come in. What's the matter? I'm disgusted. It looks like Lunsom's going to leave town before we can make a deal. But if he leaves, then we'll be able to go to Bermuda. Are you joking? If I lose this deal, I'll have to work day and night to make it up to Honeywell. Well, Dad, maybe we could figure some way to keep him in town. Margie, I've told you before, I don't want you meddling in my business affairs. I wouldn't think of meddling. But if Mr. Lundstrom should stay and you should make the deal, then we could go to Bermuda. Yes, but you aren't going to meddle. 
Dad, I wouldn't think of meddling. Here it is, Margie. The Swedish American Dictionary you wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Vern. This is Will Solenston, the actor, Mr. Solenston. Mr. Albright. Nice to know you, Mr. Albright. How do you do? Vern, I still wish you'd reconsider. You know what happens when you try to play tricks on Margie. Oh, Roberta, stop worrying. Miss Townsend has explained everything to you. I'm sure I'll be able to keep your daughter occupied. And incidentally, Mr. Albright, I think your Indian idea is the most priceless thing I've ever heard. Oh, thank you very much. By the time my daughter solves that little problem, my worries will be over. Wait over there. Oh, right. Bye, Miss Townsend. Goodbye. I've arranged everything with the clerk. Come on. Clerk? Yes, miss? Would you announce me to Mr. Olaf Lundstrom, please? Your name? Miss Albright. He knows my father. Oh, I just remember. Mr. Lundstrom is sitting right over there. A walking smorgasbord. <laughs> Mr. Lundstrom? Uh huh? I'm Margie Albright, Mr. Albright's daughter. My father said so many nice things about you, I wanted to meet you. Oh, Miss Albright. Uh huh? Uh, Margie Albright? Uh huh? I mean, yes. Yeah, I'm very glad to see you, Frickin Albright. Hmm? Oh, I glemmed you to talk about it. I talk about English. I not speak uh, much English. Oh, well, I'm prepared. No, but that was fine. Say, how should it smell with a little lunch? Lunch? Lunch. Oh, yes. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> What do you think you'll have? Uh, I don't know. I can't read uh, English either. Oh, I'll translate for you. Let's see now. Soup. Soup, soup, soup. This can take years. Uh, years? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's not on the menu. Ah, oh, let's see. It's early. Maybe you'd like some bacon and eggs. Bacon. <laughs> yeah, I understand it. Well, at least you shrug in English. Bacon. Well, let's try eggs. Eggs. about a nice steak. Steak. Now watch me. Moo. 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 the cow. Cow. That's where steak comes from. Moo. You feel all right, miss? Sure, I feel fine. I'm trying to find out what Mr. Lundstrom wants to eat. He only speaks Swedish. Lundstrom? First the girl trying to get into my suite, and now another Mr. Lundstrom? Eric, I think this calls for a little investigating. Uh, pardon, perhaps I can be of some assistance. I speak Swedish. That's very nice of you. Please sit down. Oh, thank you. My name's Margie Albright. Albright? That's a familiar name. Uh, Marchius, I mean. And this is Olaf Lundstrom. Maybe you've heard of him, the big Swedish industrialist. Oh, how interesting. I'm trying to understand. My father wants to keep him in town until he makes a deal with him. I see. I've been trying to find out what he wants for lunch. Would you ask him for me, please, Mr. Uh... Uh, Franken. Uh, William Franken. What will he have to lunch? I think he will have lunch. Yes, he has it. What'd he say? He's already had lunch. <laughs> for crying out loud. Ask him when he's planning to leave town and why. Hun will know when he's going to leave town and why. 
Eh, I hela mitt liv så har jag önskat att få se några riktiga tvättäckta indianer. Och därför reser jag till Albuquerque ikväll. Oh, ja. Uh, here says he always wanted to see some real Indians, so he's leaving tonight for Albuquerque. Indians? Jaha, uh, indianer. Uh, uh, Indians. Oh! I know where there's a whole tribe of Indians living right here in New York. When say at con visa a ritik Indian there is Central Park Ikvel. Nej, verkligen. Så trevligt. Um, kan jag tala om för henne att jag möter henne i hotellbestbubblen klockan åtta ikväll. Och att jag är mycket glad. Ja, är ju här Franken. Uh, Miss Albright. Oh, uh, don't be embarrassed. I, I was once young. He says in the lobby tonight at eight, he will be ready. Now all you have to do is produce some Indians. I'll get some Indians. I believe you will. But how? Oh, a little war paint, some feathers. I have some friends. They'll help me. Incredible. You know, I feel I should know more about this. I, I mean, I should like to know how it all comes out. Uh, perhaps I can be one of your Indians. Oh, I wouldn't ask you to do that. Well, now, an Indian who understands Swedish might come in very handy. <laughs> what? Would you help me, really? This whole business interests me more than you can imagine, Miss Holbright. Well, here's my address. We'll assemble at my place at 7.30. Thanks a million. You're very sweet. <laughs> What's it all about, Mr. Lundstrom? That's exactly what I'm going to find out. Eric, I want you to get me a book on Indian lore and a complete Indian costume. Hi, baby. Hello, Miss Elvray. Margie, if you think I'm going to walk in there and tell your father that I'm going to do an Indian war dance in Central Park tonight... What? Freddie Wilson, how long does it take you to get something through your head? My father's going to be turning handsprings. I've solved his whole problem for him. I'm keeping Mr. Lundstrom in New York, and you're helping me. You really think he'll approve? Of course he will. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Are we going in? <laughs> she went for it like a ton of bricks. She's convinced I'm the real Olaf Lundstrom. Yeah, this is an ingenious idea, all right. As long as the decoys hold out, we'll never have another bit of interference from your little Margie. <laughs> I still can't imagine how she's going to show me Indians in Central Park tonight. If she says there'll be Indians in the park tonight, there'll be Indians. <laughs> I'll see you later, Margie. I have to buy a mother for a bottle of vinegar. I'll be there. It's the last thing I ever do. And you are going to help me. Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye, Miss All right. So long, Will. You're doing a fine job. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Betty, I'm depending on you to forget what you've just seen. I'll stay with Betty and help her forget. We're going in there and set a little clap. Hi, Dad. Hi, Mr. Albright. Mr. Honeywell. I have some good news for you. But first, I have a confession to make. Confession? I disobeyed you. I went to see Mr. Lundstrom. Margie! But now let me finish. I've solved your problem. I'm going to keep him from leaving town. You are? How, how are you going to do it? Yes, Margie, how are you going to do it? He wants to see Indians, so I'm going to show him some Indians. Indians? Indians. <laughs> I knew you'd be surprised. But here's the deal. We're all going to dress up like Indians. What do you mean, we're all? Well, just what I said. All of us. We'll have to make it a good show, won't we? We may have to do it lots of times. Maybe every night until your deal is made. Excuse me, dear. Mr. Honeywell and I would like to talk this over. <laughs> I'm afraid we'll have to go through with it. Now, don't forget, we haven't signed Lundstrom yet, and something could go wrong. Well, I suppose you're right. If she's with us tonight, at least we'll know she isn't with Lundstrom. Yes. 
cashier. Oh, you can fool anybody. Come on in. I could wring your neck. How did you get in on it? The way I get in on everything. Margie's helping her father. Roberta, you wouldn't let Dad down at a time like this, would you? End of quote. And here I am, a generally level-headed businesswoman masquerading as an Indian. Ah, and that isn't all. Later on this evening, I'm doing a war dance in Central Park. Oh, I'm sorry, Roberta. I never thought she'd involve you. <laughs> I bought a record this afternoon and boned up on the calls. Wow! Oh, wait, 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 let's fool them. Say I'm a real Indian. Hmm? I'm just helping you. I don't want to be identified. All right, Mr. Franken. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I want you to meet someone. This is uh, Chief White Cloud. He's a real Indian. Me, no speaking English. Much good. Oh. Oh, Chief. Dad, you and Mr. Honeywell better hurry and get dressed. We don't want to keep Mr. Lundstrom waiting. Of course not. Come on, Mr. Honeywell. If your father ever finds out my part in this... You got out of dressing like an Indian, didn't you? Yeah, but what I have to do now is a thousand times worse. Now, don't forget, make the call at exactly 8.45. 8.45. Check your watch against mine. Chase evil spirits away. Old Indian, give spirit call. Wah! 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 Now all stand up. We do a war dance. This has gone far enough. Dad, him no understand English, so all right to talk, but make him sound like Indian. What me try and say is already do plenty big Indian ceremony. Now let's stop him act and get back home, 10th floor TP. Not yet. First we do a big war dance. Everybody follow me. What's the, I mean, uh, uh, what a big idea? We go prepare a big surprise for Mr. Lundstrom. You keep them dance going. All right, em, but make them snappy. Em. <laughs> now watch. You'll know in just a few minutes. You've won this time, Freddie, my boy. You've won. You're not going to do what Margie says. You jellyfish. <laughs> Hello, operator. Give me the police department, please. Sergeant Carey speaking. What? You want to report what? Indians in Central Park. I think they're going to burn a man at the stake. One of them just asked me for a match. Say, who are you anyway? Hello, hello. Indians up in Central Park having a war dance. 
And you found out it was a gag? Mm-hmm. And that's why I got the three of you away from them. I'm going to fix them good. Just stick around and watch the fun. <laughs> It's all right. You and Mr. Honeywell can stop if you like. Oh, did you forget that I'm not really Mr. Lunster? Say, that's right. We'll keep on yelling so they won't know we stopped. Central Park area. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. Investigate report of Indians in Central Park. Is he kidding? <laughs> Marty and the others are. I think I hear them coming now, on your feet. Good evening, fellas. You, you're looking for somebody? Uh, just a minute, I, 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 I can explain everything. Yeah, go ahead, Albright. Tell them it's only a gag. Now, come along quietly and everything will be nice and peaceful. <laughs> I'd like to be there when they try and explain to the judge. I thought that radio dispatcher was drunk. Something tells me we're all going to be there. Uh, honest, fellas, you don't want us. We're nice, quiet Indians. Those are the bad ones. Yeah, we understand. Come on. Come on. Name? Ben and Albright. Name? Roberta, I'm Innocent Townsend. Couple of nice middle names you have there. Name? Will Solenstein. Name? Margie Albright. I don't want to go to jail. Oh, Miss Albright, please don't think of it as jail. Just think of it as an indoor Indian reservation. Name? Olaf Lundstrom. Mr. Mr. Lundstrom. Yes, Albright. And please do me a favor. The next time you want to keep your daughter from meeting me, just let me meet her. Well, I guess this ruins everything. Mr. Lundstrom, please don't blame my father. It was all my fault. <laughs> Believe me, my dear, I've never had so much fun in years. <laughs> and Albright, if you use one for that resource for that your daughter, I can rest assured my finances are in good hands. Oh, Mr. Lundstrom, do you really mean it? Sure, we got the deal. Oh, Mr. Lundstrom, <laughs> you're wonderful. Marty. You heal. Well, I guess that answers my question before I ask it. Go ahead and ask it. I've gone out with heels before. <laughs> I hate to break up romances, even between Indians. But may I ask a question? What the devil were you up to tonight? Listen, well, listen to me. I, I'm not even the one in India. I was dead like this. You see, I'm not going to get my daughter. I'm not going to get my daughter. What? Yeah.